Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's yoga video. So technical errors. I erased the introduction to this by accident. So I'm doing a little voiceover here. Not to worry. The actual video is coming. So this video is going to be about 22 minutes long. It's going to be a foundations class. And I really recommend this for all levels, even if you've been practicing yoga for a really long time, because oftentimes we find ourselves just developing some bad habits, sinking into our weaknesses. So this is kind of taking it back to basics, bringing awareness to alignment and paying attention to the little things, the subtle aspects of the practice that's really going to help um, ensure that you're doing it correctly and, and going to protect your joints and your body as you move through your yoga journey. So without further ado, let's start standing on our mat. And thank you again for tuning in. Okay, so coming to the top of your yoga mat, you'll turn to the side, but I'm gonna face you just so you can see me better. I want you to look down at your feet, and then with your thumbs, locate your hips, top of the hip points, and bring your feet so that your feet are about as wide as your thumbs, so it's called hip distance. And then look down at the feet, lift your toes up, spread them as wide as you can, and set them down. If you can't spread your toes, you can reach down, bend your knees, spread them manually, and then set them down. From here, roll your shoulders back. Bring your awareness to the bottoms of the feet. And see if you can locate all four corners of both feet. So what does that really mean? We're looking for the big toe mounds. So that's not the actual fleshy part of the toe, but the, the space underneath. Um, like before where the toe begins, if that makes sense. So if this is your foot, it's right here, okay? Not the actual toe itself, but right here. And then same thing on the pinky. And then bring your awareness to your heels, and you'll take the right side and the left side of both heels, so the edges of both heels. Go ahead and close your eyes and bring your awareness to those four points. Now from here, Begin to make circles, small circles with your hips. Seeing if you can continue to bring your awareness to all four corners. Noticing that your weight hits all four corners as you create these circles. And then change direction of the circles. So the biggest part of yoga is having that mind-body connection. And what we're doing here is just bringing awareness to the bottoms of the feet. When we're in standing posture, when we are just moving through our life in an upright position, we are generally on our feet. So we want to have really good mind-body awareness. Coming back to center, begin to shift your weight over side to side, left foot, then right foot. Again, bringing awareness to all four corners of both feet before coming to center and maintaining that connection to all four corners. See if you can gently lift your arches up. And one trick to do that, if you're struggling with that, is to really press into the big toe mounds and the heels. Bringing your awareness once again to the arches, follow your breath all the way up through the crown of your head. So as you inhale, you will lengthen. And as you exhale, you'll relax your shoulder blades down the sides of the back, using your rhomboids, your upper back muscles, to open up through the heart. And then see if you can take your chin a micro, micro amount back, imagining that your head is in line with the base of your spine. Let your arms be heavy by your sides. Bring awareness to your pelvis. Let your pelvis be heavy. Let your legs be heavy. Imagining that the energy there, that's called the panavayu, the energy there is moving downwards. And then the energy from the hips up is moving upwards. Almost like you have two opposing lines of energy. Almost like you're a connection between the sky and the earth. And we'll just breathe here for a minute. And as you breathe, breathe in and out through your nose. Mouth is closed, but teeth are relaxed apart from each other. This will help to relax your jaw. 
And as you breathe in, see if you can use your diaphragm to breathe, not just the upper part of the lung. So to do that, and you might want to take your hands and bring your fingers so that they are around the front of your rib cage and the thumb so that it's around the back of your rib cage. And as you breathe in, you'll visualize your ribs expanding out to the side. That's going to be good diaphragmatic breathing, a good indicator that you are breathing really well. So as you stay nice and tall, and try not to hunch as you do this, stay nice and open through your chest. Breathe in and expand out laterally. And as you exhale, your rib cage comes back in towards its center. Breathing in laterally. And exhale, bring the ribs in back to center naturally. This time as you breathe in out to the sides laterally, see if you can end the breath by breathing into your thumbs just a tiny bit more. Notice how that lifts you up, but then bring your head back ever so slightly because your head may have dropped forward and exhale. And do that two more times. And last time. So this is a really great way to breathe just in your regular day-to-day -day life because it calms the parasympathetic nervous system, triggers that parasympathetic nervous system response so you're more calm. Um, and it helps to massage the internal organs and the low back muscles. So it's really great, especially if you have back pain as well. Breathing really well helps you to have great posture. And that's the way you want to breathe when you are practicing yoga. So come to the top of your mat. We'll take that stance once again. This is called Tadasana or Mountain Pose. As you inhale, breathing out laterally to the sides, lift your arms up overhead. As you exhale, fold forward and bend your knees. And as you fold forward, allow a global movement from the spine. So what I mean by that is, yes, my back is rounding, my head is hanging heavy. A lot of times people keep their head out like this. It's really bad for your cervical spine. So we wanna have a global movement as we reach all the way down to the ground for forward fold. Let your head hang heavy here and press into your hands as you slowly step back. We're gonna find our way into downward facing dog. So for downward facing dog, we wanna have the um, knees bent a little bit if you need to, or then you can also reach your heels down towards the mat. Let your head hang heavy, push the ground away. And as you inhale, we'll step the right foot forward and lower the left knee to the ground. Lifting up through the torso, what you're going to do here is keep your toes curled. See if you can get even your pinky toe to be curled here. And then bring your hands to your hips. And we'll do a little bit of this like Elvis pelvic tilt thing back and forth. Just to bring some awareness to the pelvis. And then see if you can come into a neutral position. So you're not tilted one way or another. Once you're here, keep your arms by your side, hanging low, staying heavy. Draw your head slowly back just a little bit so that it is in line with the base of your spine. And then as you inhale and expand laterally through your ribs, come forward with the hips, but don't dump into it. Don't just like let go. Come forward a little bit, maintaining that activation and breathe into the hip flexor here. Now bring your awareness to the um, front part of the ribs here and see if you can just gently tuck the front part of the ribs. It doesn't need to be this like extreme rounding but just a gentle tuck so that if you tried to get your fingers underneath your rib cage you couldn't because you're gently embracing a little, you're gently bracing a tiny bit. So holding here, breathing into the hip flexor. I want you to put a little bit of pressure into your heel of the front foot. What that's going to do is activate your right glute. So just establishing that mind-body awareness. 
and doing that diaphragmatic breathing. So as you inhale, you'll breathe out laterally. You can even bring your hands to your ribs. And then at the very end, you'll breathe into your thumbs there. And as you exhale, the ribs come back in. And continue to breathe just like that. And from here, we will bring the hands down, uncurl the foot, but keep a gentle flex in the foot as you reach the heel towards your butt. And we'll do that a couple times. Go slow, move with intention. Keep the toes spread because that's going to activate the whole foot. We're using our hamstring muscle and our glute to lift the heel towards the butt. And then from here, you'll take your left hand, bring it out to the side a little bit. You might even want to take it off your mat for a little mini twist. Now, I'm just going to switch sides so you can see me a little better. So, as you are here, you can take your right hand and press it into your right knee. But as you sink a bit, you want to use your back muscles to stay lifted and bright. So broad through your chest, lifted and bright. You can even bring your hand to your sacrum and just make sure you're stable there. And then bring your awareness to your right scapula and make sure that it is wrapped into your back muscles and not just kind of hanging out. And same for the left side as well. Bring your awareness to your left scapula. And make sure that it is pinned against your back. Activate the muscles between your scapula so that you can use your back muscles to stay bright and open through the chest. Anytime, pretty much the general rule is anytime you're opening one side, the opposite side is really working. So we want to activate those back muscles. You can take your gaze up. And then if it feels good, you can do this like Stevie Wonder kind of thing. Where you're just going like side to side with the gaze up. And if you need to pause anywhere because it feels really good to stretch and stay there, go ahead and do that. Keeping your back muscles engaged, the arm is plugged into the socket. We'll gently release here, bringing the hands down to frame the foot. So maybe you want to heel toe your right foot in a little bit, and then gently lift up from the foot, pressing the heel into the ground as you walk yourself back for a little hamstring stretch. Now, as you are here, you want to be lifted and tall. And if this is quite a lot for you, you can take your block and just come up onto your block. Imagine that your spine is in that neutral position. And if you can't find it, you can even play with that tilt of your pelvis back and forth, back and forth until you find neutral. Spread the toes, breathe. And then you can also play with pronating and supinating with the foot. So you kind of take it side to side, bringing the pinky toe towards your head and then the big toe towards your head, just to see what kind of impact that has on the back of the leg. When you're ready, gently release. We'll frame the front foot and step back for a quick downward dog and then step forward with the other leg. So, the leg comes forward, the right knee comes down. We rise up, arms by the side, and then we'll play with a little bit of that Elvis pelvic tilt until we find neutral, and then slowly come forward, making sure that our pinky toe especially is pressed into the mat with the toes curled. So we don't want to just like let it go and dump into it. We want to keep that activation and then breathe length through the front body here. As you're here, bring your hands to the front ribs, gently tuck them in a bit and find even more length. Let your arms be heavy. Maybe bring your head ever so slightly back so it's in line with the base of your spine. Put a little bit of pressure into the left heel to activate the glute. So now we're turning on the left glute as well. And 
and then slowly come forward and bring the right hand maybe off the mat. Once again, I'll turn just so you have a better view here. You can see what's going on better. We'll take the left hand and maybe press it into the lower part of the left thigh. I hope you've been able to hear me. This microphone is a little twisted into the fabric. So as you press away, you'll get a nice stretch through the inner left thigh. As you are here, lengthen through the front body and pin your scapula on the left and right side to the back, gently activating the muscles between your shoulder blades. And then maybe doing a little bit of a twist through the neck, side to side, pausing anywhere that feels good. And gently coming back to center, maybe heel toeing your left foot in as you extend back. So you're gonna press into the heel, lifting the toes straight up to the air, spread the toes. Remember, if you have a tough time spreading the toes, you can just manually spread them. And we'll look for a neutral pelvis here. So you can go back and forth, and if you can't find a whole lot of movement, maybe you should use a block to come up high, and then you should be able to find a little bit more movement. And then stop at a neutral stance. And then from here, just gently melt yourself forward until you feel a good stretch through the hamstring. Remember, you don't want to feel this through the back, and you will feel it through the back if you're rounding like this. So it's better for you to lift up and then come forward, reaching your belly down towards your thighs rather than rounding through the back. So again, we're looking for that expansion through the chest, through the lungs, through the torso as you inhale. Breathing into the back at the top of that inhale and then exhale, allowing your rib cage to come in. As you inhale, can walk yourself forward and gently step back. We're gonna find our way into a child's pose. So reach your arms out in front of you. Your knees can be together or apart. Let your head rest on the mat. And breathe in such a way that if you were outside your body and watching yourself breathe, you could see your back lift, the middle part of your back lift as you inhale. And breathe in such a way that if you were standing over yourself, you could see your rib cage expand laterally. One more breath in and out. As you inhale, round forward, finding your way onto all fours. Curl your toes and lift your hips and then begin to walk your hands back. And round all the way up, letting your head come up last. From here, step your right foot forward. Big, big, big stance. And then we'll turn the left foot so that we are um, parallel to the short edge of the mat with the outer edge of the foot. So turn and take a look back at your back foot. Make sure the outer edge is parallel. And then from here, we'll sink low through the hips, aiming to have our hips even here. You should feel a nice stretch through your inner thigh, and if you don't, just walk your arm, sorry, walk your front foot out in front of you. Then extend your arms, and one of the tricks you can do to make sure you're in good alignment here is fold at the elbows, and your thumbs should touch your shoulders. So if you're down here, you know that your arms are too low, and if your thumbs touch your shoulders, you know that you're, you're good. But as you're here, wrap your shoulder blades around your upper back, 
and then extend your arms and take your gaze out over your right middle finger. So relax your shoulders away from your ears in a way that your traps, the tops of your shoulders here, relax down and broaden, and then activate your upper back muscles so they are the ones doing the work to hold your arms out to the side. Because so often we just use these top muscles, these traps, to lift the arms up, when really we need to be using the whole upper back muscles to lift the arms up. As you are here, plug the arms into your sockets. So you shouldn't be like reaching out so far that your um, shoulder joints feel like they're loose. You wanna be reaching in towards your body with the shoulders, but reaching out away from your body with the fingers. Without turning your head, just glance down and make sure you can see your first few toes. If you can't, because your knee is blocking the view, open up your knee a little bit. As you inhale, gently release. We'll bring the hands to hips and we'll heel toe the um, front foot and just switch direction. So now we're just gonna go to warrior two in the other way. So this may require a little bit of moving around, that's cool. Start by glancing back at your new back foot, making sure that the outer edge of the foot is parallel to the short edge of your mat. Then from here, nice wide stance, sink a little low. You don't wanna have your knee in front of your ankle. If it's a little behind, that's fine. Just make sure that you're feeling a stretch through your inner thigh. Hips are as even as they can be. And then you can open up your arms out to the side, bend at the elbows, and just make sure that your thumbs touch your shoulders. As you release, use your upper back muscles to kind of pull your arms in towards your body as you extend and reach through your fingertips, taking your gaze out over your left middle finger. Without moving your head, just take your eyes down. Make sure you can see your first few toes. And if you can't, track your knee out to the left. Really press down through all four corners of the feet. Breathe, expanding laterally. Breathe into the upper back there. And then straighten your front foot and heel toe yourself in. Roll your shoulders back. Arms hang heavy by your side. Close your eyes, bringing awareness once again to the bottoms of your feet. Coming back into that diaphragmatic breathing, ribs open up out to the side laterally as you inhale. And bring your hands to heart center to seal in your practice. Thank you for practicing with me, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below in the comment section. I will do my best to answer. I try to answer everyone, but lately I've just been traveling a lot, so it takes me a little bit to get back to you, but I will answer you, promise. And don't forget, we now have an app. It's available on the iTunes App Store. You can just search Yoga by Candice, one word, to check it out. And my book, Namaste, is available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and most major bookstores everywhere. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you very soon here on the YBC YouTube channel.